uh, were taken from a, a lager beer uh, throughout five rowing step. Uh, uh, 60 volatile organic metabolites uh, were identified by microstration followed follow by uh, mass spectrometry. Um, specific profiles were observed at different states of brewing. Uh, aldeis and furans, um, uh, aliphatic esters, and pre are predominant alcohols the following steps. These um, uh, volatile organic metabolites can influence the final uh, taste of the beer. Um, ethyl alcohol contributes to its strong and, uh, and isoamyl acetate that um, uh, adds through the odor in, in this part. Uh, it shows the steps of uh, preparing a lager beer, um, world preparation, fermentation, maduration, filtration, bottling. Uh, they were refrigerated between uh, two and five centigrade Celsius grades were transported in the laboratory and stored um, uh, uh, um, and under uh, 20 uh, centigrade uh, uh, work preparation, uh, blast hot products were added to the wood at the beginning of uh, bubbling. Uh, okay. Uh, infiltration, it was filtered uh, through a tunnel filter with uh, dromatosis air and, and silica gel, and, and finally bottling. Um, uh, okay. In, in this part, um, the chromatographic profiles of the volatile metabolites of different preparation states are observed only where the final product shown. Um, uh, uh, what else? Uh, okay, in, in this part, um, uh, shows a global vision of variation of the volatile composition during the, the elaboration. Um, uh, in, in this part, this discretion only includes the abundant um, volatile organic metabolites, uh, phenyl ethyl acetate at uh, 14 uh, Celsius grade and ethyl, um, ethyl alcohol at um, at uh, 14 uh, Celsius grade and seven and seven Celsius grades, and uh, this part uh, volatile organic metabolite ab abundant with significant variation throughout the brewing process, uh, described in, in purfunil alcohol at uh, 12 uh, Celsius grade and acetic acid and uh, 15 uh, Celsius grade. The taste of lager beer fermentation is dominated by aliphatic esters and alcohols that uh, represent 97% uh, of the fraction of uh, volatile metabolites. Ethyl alcohol and ethyl octanoid are the relevant uh, blood representing uh, with 66% uh, uh, of the fraction of volatile metabol uh, metabolites. Um, during the fermentation process, a significant difference were observed. Uh, Octanoid plus abundant of I am out. Or is Edison out? For obtaining information about the impact of beer or the final product being very useful for a certification purpose. Thanks.
Hola, hola. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, it's my it's my turn. It's my turn. Yes. Yes, okay. please go ahead. Okay, okay. Let me five minutes, please. And five seconds. Ah, please, uh, uh, it's better that continue the next one, and I will. Okay. I'll be Okay. I will present mine. Who comes next? Um, I can um, present instead of Gustavo. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, can you see my my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So today I would like to talk about this uh, article called "Can you have bit have." Oh, sorry, can you have BT scalgans exhibits positive gravity axis? Um, so, CLNs is a, a great tool in order to determine which genes uh, actuate for each function, as it has um, um, a significant relationship with the human uh, genes. So, um, in this case, um, the researchers are going to uh, demonstrate how um, how C elegance, uh, how it swims and it, its swimming orientates to the gravity vector. So um, we all know that the animal swims by propagating undulatory waves from head to tail in the dorsal ventral plane. But there are there is more uh, complicated than that. So what they did was to uh, first Placed the C. elegans with this micropep in this cuvette. So they used two cameras. The first camera uh, was to analyze the yes set, sorry, the Y set uh, plane, and the second camera was um, to analyze the X set plane. So they are going to measure the angles uh, that the uh, C. elegans rotates in order to um, move itself to the gravity vector. So here, these uh, images, you can see from A, which is the first uh, position, how it begins. The red dot represents where the head of the, the method is located. So you see how it moves. And this distance is the depth or the, the distance from the surface of the water, uh, from the bu uh, buffer, sorry, the M9 buffer. So it starts rotating, as you can see here in the sequence of images. So finally, at the at the J image, you can see how it has rotated uh, almost 800, 800, sorry, 180 degrees. As you can see here in this um, scheme, in the K, K um, um, panel, you can see how it's represented. For example, A, how it's going to be changing, how the angle increases. And also with this color um, field, you can see how how the angle increases from from a, a from a 90 degrees to a, to this yellow represented here to the 180 degrees so here we can also see a, a schematic of the um, the c elegance according to the position so how deep it has a um, swim so here is the probability distribution of the c elegance and according to the to the degree, so how much it has rotated, all right? So here we can compare wild type worms, which are the worms that uh, the wild type, the ones that are not mutated, and in the in the B we have an other types of uh, the wild type wild type nematodes, which has been hit hit shot paralyzed. So the the researchers have used uh, three ways of uh, cause muscle paralysis. So the first one is elevated temperature exposure, as you can see here. And another one is the immersing wild type animals in sodium acid solution. And the third one is that animals can carry a mutation in the major muscle myosin gene. Uh, so we are going to compare. And using this uh, formula, the researchers have uh, determine how 
the position of the of the and the velocity of the nematodes. So here you see a comparison between the wild type, the translational velocity, and a comparison with the mutated nematode. This is the mutation, the UNC54 mutation, and that's a comparison with the sedimentary uh, sedimentation velocity. And this mutated one uh, is going to gravitate. You see how the velocity uh, is compared according to the angle. So here you see the cosinus of that angle and how it variates um, according to the velocity. So there are also um, these other comparisons when you can see um, uh, they also compare a different uh, density uh, liquid. So um, instead of the buffer, they use a denser liquid. Um, and that's what happened with, when the nematodes are, are here in the denser liquid. So you can see how it starts rotating as well. So it doesn't depend on the, on the viscosity of the, of the liquid. So um, here you see how the probability distribution also uh, changed. And then they wanted to change other genes. So because they wanted to determine, oh, is it the dopamine uh, genes, the ones that take place, the ones that are more important for the gravity orientation, the gravity axis. So they tried all these different genes. And here we see a representation of, of how, uh, how the, the, the dopamine genes here, the ones dot one, dot two, and dot three. And these ones are the most important. And they determined that if, if the nematode is mutated for those genes, it, it doesn't, uh, it, gravity axis is not observed. But if everything is all right with those, with those genes, so they can uh, orientate for, to the gravity vector. And they also compare the animal vitality. Here is represented with double, uh, double B O. And, and also the, the depth beneath the liquid surface. So here you see us, that as well. So this is very important because um, in, uh, if we understand gravity axis, then we can uh, we can understand how it works also for human beings, and that that is a, a breakthrough uh, finding. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, in this occasion, uh, I'm going to talk about this um, a topic cost effective and rapid prototyping of a, a PMEA. This is a polymetal metacrylate. Microsphere device uh, um, via polymer assisted bonding. Okay, uh, we'll see what is the, uh, the purpose of this uh, article. Uh, they use uh, a laser, a CO2 laser, uh, in order to engrave in the microfluidic, uh, microfluidic channels. Then they use um, um, these uh, different solutions in order to protect uh, the channels and then ensemble the microfluidic and they use bonding then remove uh, the PCMN solutions and they uh, use for applications. Okay, we will uh, we, we'll see step by step uh, what is the, the results of this uh, uh, article. Uh, first, this is the design that we use the application. This is the fabrication of the droplets. Um, uh, they use, uh, this is the engraving uh, microfluidic device. This is a methyl uh, metacrylate. They use two different techniques in order to grab in the first technique is using the less power of the laser. And this is the, the B is the 100% uh, of laser. And this is the characterization of this uh, power laser uh, engraving. This is the different um, uh, structures of the laser. And then this concept is, is the the, these channels with the bonding. Uh, this is the different solutions that they use in order to protect the channels. 
uh, in order to perform bonding, they use different uh, percentage of uh, uh, methyl metacrylate uh, dissolved in three different uh, solvents. Uh, this one, uh, the blue one is uh, dichloro, uh, dichloromethane. And this is the uh, bonding strength that they, they measure after the bonding. It means that the the for separate this uh, the you uh, the better one is the metacrylate dissolving in dimethyl metacrylate because is the the pressure is is a little bit uh, 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 greater no okay then uh, uh, this is how it looks in uh, in a same uh, uh, images with different percentage of uh, dimethyl metacrylate dissolved in in um, in polymethyl metacrylate dissolved in in dichloromethane and it, you see what is the best uh, bonding uh, image you know, with the 2.5 percent and this is the pre bonding uh, in this, uh, when, they, when when you use uh, uh, the the solution you know, uh, this this part is the the channel and they use the solution in order to protect the channel because the bonding could be uh, uh, could, could be uh, uh, is at uh, the point of the microfluid device, and this is after the semi application. It means that the microfluid channel is, is free, I mean, it's not affected uh, by the bonding. Okay, uh, okay, this is the different structures that they perform with this technique, and they perform the, the um, uh, simulation in order to get. Uh, what is the best um, volume, uh, volume, and also the, uh, the in, in order to frame the, the micro droplets? And this is the application. This is how it looks the uh, the micro droplets. Uh, this is the, the two different uh, in order uh, according to the modulation. These two different. Uh, flows that they use and this is the frequency of drop that they obtain uh, uh, okay this is all thank you uh, good morning everyone can you clearly see my screen? Yes, we see. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, today I'm going to inform you about uh, artificial intelligence in medicine, today and tomorrow. Um, the goal of this paper is to provide a view on recent development uh, of AI in medicine, provide them in use uh, cases where AI power medical technologies can already be used in clinical practice in the challenges uh, that healthcare uh, professionals. Uh, the development of intelligent medical technologies is led in the, the development of a new field in, in medicine, augmented medicine, I mean, um, the use of, uh, of new medical technologies to, to improve different aspects of clinical practice. Uh, in addition, they don't uh, only enable by AI-based technologies, uh, but also several uh, other digital uh, tools such as surgical navigation uh, system for, for computer-assisted surgery. Now uh, we're going to, to talk about the current application uh, of AI in medicine. The early detection of atrial fibrillation was one of the, the first application of AI in medicine. Um, at the same time, AI has been used to, to predict uh, the risk of cardiovascular disease uh, better than traditional scales. Uh, although recent review uh, has, however, reported how result can vary depending on, on the sample uh, size uh, used in the research report. Regarding pulmonary medicine, we can say that our recent study uh, reported how AI-based uh, software provide more accurate uh, interpretation and serves uh, as a decision support tool in the case of interpreting uh, results from pulmonary functions. That's uh, about uh, nephrology. Uh, AI has been applied in, in uh, 
uh, in different fields in clinical uh, neurology, uh, but our recent review informs uh, how at this moment research is limited, limited uh, by sample size necessary for conclusion. Regarding gastroenterology, uh, it benefits from uh, a wide range uh, of AI application in clinical uh, in clinical fields. They use um, convolutional neural networks, among other deep learning models, uh, in order to to process uh, image um, from endoscopy and uh, ultrasound, uh, as well as artificial neural networks to diagnose. Um, gastroesophageal reflux disease, as well as to, to predict outcomes in the survival esophageal uh, cancer. About uh, neurology, uh, we cannot mention that intelligent seizure detection uh, are, promised, are promising technologies uh, in addiction, uh, gait, uh, posture, um, tremor assessment, uh, wearable sensor has proven useful to quantitatively, quantitatively Parkinson and Huntington disease. Uh, now uh, we are going to talk about the, the challenges, uh, future uh, direction of AI in medicine. Although many studies have already uh, introduced uh, the utility of AI, we mentioned uh, three limitations as well as provide uh, possi possible ways to overcome them. Uh, first of all, um, most of the study uh, comparing efficiency of AI versus uh, clinic, clinician are found to have unreliable. Um, this could be overcome in the open science area as data and methods uh, are bound to receive more and more attention as best practice in research. And second, uh, AI application in clinical practice um, are known to be limited with this in mind. Uh, continuous re-evaluation after the adoption of uh, algorithms should be necessary. Um, the final sort, uh, only a few studies are known to compare AI and clinician based on the same data set. In this slide, several studies are now approaching the interaction between clinician algorithms as the combination of uh, human and AI performs either alone. Uh, regarding uh, the need to educate or mental doctors, uh, a lot of university uh, has started to create a new medical curriculum uh, because of challenges of artificial intelligence in medicine. Uh, the doctors will uh, count on both uh, clinical experience and digital expertise to, to solve um, uh, modern uh, health problems. Uh, when, with this in mind, uh, society uh, as well as healthcare institution um, could uh, could benefit uh, from this professional, uh, including AI in medicine. Uh, finally, uh, we have a we have a question: uh, Will doctor be replaced by AI? Uh, doctor uh, will most likely not be replaced by AI. Future studies uh, should focus on the comparison between uh, physician using artificial intelligence solution with physician uh, without aid of such application and extend uh, those comparison to translational clinical trial. trial. Um, only uh, then will artificial intelligence be accepted as complementary to, to physician. As a final conclusion, we can say that the implementation of AI in clinical practice uh, is a promising area of development um, that rapid uh, evolves uh, together with the, with the other modern fields uh, of precision med medicine and teleconsultation. That's all, uh, many thanks for listening. Can you see my screen? Yes, we see it. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Last week, I had the opportunity to attend online some talks on the on biological physics 
at the annual Congress of the Argentine Peace Society. And there I found these researchers from Conicet and Health, interesting works on cell pieces. They, I will talk, I will talk about her last work published in 2020. Nara Gisoni, he uh, researches and she works in La Plata. Alter, alter, um, alternating regions of motion in a model in cell cell interaction. Okay. This paper is totally theoretical. Use Hamiltonian equation for the physical description of cell dynamics and values of the Monte Carlo method which solves the stochastic equation of motion that arise from the analysis from the data. They consider a cellular spot model where cells move actively in the direction of the driving fields. When, when the cell density is high, the, the effect due to the interaction between cells must be taken into account in this work. The models, this interaction with a frictional coefficient. The single cells tracking techniques provide substantial evidence that in the absence of the human practice, few cells before a specific random work, which has been modeled by the constant Olympic process. Okay. However, there is self-motion without human practice that will follow the OU process. For example, algae cells, human fibroblasts, and the costelium cells. In this paper, Gisoni et al. introduced a cell reorientation model based on the cellular port model, CPM. Framework. In order to study the, the effect of the cell cells interaction on alter alternating regimes of motion occurring in a large Time scale. Time scale. Equation one sees the first term corresponds to energy of the interaction cells. Quarter is the exchange energy between cells. The second and fifth term in turn correspond to the energy cost when cells, volume, and perimeter deviate from the equilibrium value is there. The driving fields, the driving field is characterized by direction north, by theta and an and intensity x. In, here, in this equation, in theta is an angle and oh, oh, obeys to the stochastic differential equation with aleatory variable epsilon. Epsilon is here in this equation. So is a stochastic variable. The sense velocity is Define the as this equation, the end, and the, and the direction of the self movement is calculated in the arc of the function. 
the mean squared displacement and SD is defined by this equation. In, 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 figure, in figure one, show a logarithm plot of the mean squared displacement and SD versus time with OU process or a standard process made here OU process and OU process plus feedback. Feedback, feedback includes driving fields. Driving fields. The A corresponds to the low density cells and the high density cells. The duration of the diffusive period is shorter when the friction coefficient lambda is higher. In, in this case, B corresponds to the higher lambda. Indeed. We can see three regimes in this dynamic ballistic regimes for short times, the diffusive regime at medium pain scale and ballistic regimen for high time scale or a long time scale. In, 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 for low density cells, in, we cannot see the ballistic regimes at long time. Figure two mm, show the very good collapse on a single curve for the mean square displacement normalized by potential scaling law. In this is potential scale law CP in B beta. For high density cells, it is not true. In this case, in, in the, for different values of the friction coefficient, in, we can see in several, several curves. In contrast to the low density cells, and all the dynamic in, can, can be described in, into a a one in a one line of the MSD plot. Figure three corresponds the temporal behavior of the MSD scale with time as in, in proportional to in P and potential low beta. beta. Beta equal to correspond to the ballistic behavior and B in two correspond to the ballistic um, behavior and one correspond to the normal diffusion behavior. By means of logarithm derivative function, we can see beta. These figures show the plot of the beta for different values of the coefficient friction coefficient lambda. Mm -hmm. All the schools show the anomalous diffusion and the tendency to increase forward ballistic regime. We tend to the ballistic regime when the friction increase. Friction, uh, friction increase means that the cells uh, are, uh, are very close one to another cells. They observe alternating regimes with the ballistic behavior and alternative behavior and the normal diffusion for a, a MSD function. The almost ballistic behavior at short times is related to the persistence time tau of the driving fields. At large time scale, 
they found a second crossover between the diffusive behavior and ballistic regimen as a consequence of the existence of the preferential duration in the angle of the The crossover could be relevant in the context of the self relation in this tactic. Finally, the autocorrelation function CT of the velocity is another important tool to characterize cells in movement. Figure 4 shows that high density cursors have smaller ACF function than low density function. The velocity is, is smaller than in this case it corresponds to the high density cells. And all the whole, whole process must plus feedback, the velocity in relation function is different to zero. In contrast with the low density function. We can conclude that the feedback makes cell movement more efficient, mostly for high density cruise. It is all. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be presenting this paper, a uh, microfluidic colorimetric biosensor for in-field detection of salmonella. So the commonly used methods for detection of foodborne pathogens include uh, culture-based methods, PCR and ELISA. And these methods uh, either need from three to two days for obtaining the results, well-trained technicians and complex DNA extraction procedures, or they lack the sufficient sensitivity. So in this work, they uh, presented a novel microfluidic colorimetric VL sensors, which can perform a rapid and in-field detection of salmonella within 45 minutes. So uh, the chip mainly consists of a reaction chamber, a colorimetric detection, uh, detection chamber, a host-based microbiome, and two micromixing channels. The Complementary DNA magnetic nanoparticles conjugates were loaded into the uh, reaction chamber and uh, they will combine with uh, adapter microsphere conjugates in the first uh, micromixing uh, channel. After the magnetic separation, large numbers of Salmonella aptalmer microsphere conjugates are present in the uh, supernatant. Uh, when the supernatant was uh, incubated with gold nanoparticles in the second micromixing channel, the sulfidryl groups of cystamine will capture these gold nanoparticles. And the aggregation of the gold nanoparticles on the surface of the microsphere leads to a colorimetric signal or change of color in the detection chamber. When salmonella is not present in the sample, the, these uh, conjugates will be combined with complementary DNA magnetic nanoparticles. And after magnetic separation, there are no aptamer microsphere conjugates in the supernatant, so the gold nanoparticles keep the red color in the colorimetric detection chamber. The color changes of the aggregated uh, gold nanoparticles are proportional to the concentration of uh, salmonella. And here I'll show you how uh, this uh, microbial works. The microbial is opened when uh, when the microbial is open, the solution of the channel can flow through uh, the microbial. But when the solution uh, the microbial is closed with a binder clip, the solution cannot flow through through there. So, in order to evaluate the stability of the developed microbial. The microfluidic system was continually, uh, continuously injected for 72 hours at uh, the flow rate of up to uh, 2,000 microliters per minute, and they saw that these microbials remained stable and without uh, leakage. 
and uh, the microvalve here controls the uh, flow direction of the fluid. So, under optimal condition, conditions, different concentrations of salmonella were detected using this uh, microfluidic bion sensor by a smart smartphone imaging app. And the red color of the gold nanoparticles changed from a deep to shallow when uh, the concentrations of salmonella increased. The saturation was found uh, to have a good linear relationship between uh, the concentration of salmonella. Similar results were found for other foodborne, foodborne pathogen detection methods using different uh, microfluidic biosensors. However, this developed micro microfluidic sensor is, uh, has a shorter detection time. Then, uh, in order to evaluate the sensitiv sensitivity of the microfluidic uh, biosensor by this smartphone imaging app, different concentrations of salmonella were also uh, quantitatively analyzed using the microfluidic colorimetric color sensor by a uh, spectroscopy. These uh, authors saw that the sensitivity of the microfluidic colorimetric, colorimetric bias sensor by this I, I imaging app was similar to that, to that analyzed by spectroscopy. And also, they analyzed the specificity of the biosensor using two common foodborne pathogens, E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus. And they used those alone and with mixtures of uh, salmonella. Similar concentration of salmonella, E. coli, and Staphylococcus aureus and their mixtures were analyzed by both the uh, smartphone imaging app and spectroscopy. And the, they saw that significant changes of saturation and, and absorbance were only observed in samples with the salmonella. The changes of saturation and absorbance of samples with only non-target bacteria were close to that of the control. So these results indicated that the proposed microfluidic colorimetric bion sensor had a good specificity. And finally, to further verify the applicability, the biosensor was used for the detection of spike fresh cut vegetable salad samples by uh, this imaging uh, app. And as you can see here in the table, they developed the, the developed microfluidic uh, biosensor can be reliable and useful for the detection of uh, salmonella in fresh cut vegetable samples. That will be all. Thank you. Hello, Ruga. Uh, you can see my screen? Yes, yes we can. Thanks for your confirmation. Uh, yeah, in this case, uh, uh, I, I find uh, the, the, this article uh, um, to speak the uh, Cas9 and uh, different variables for uh, use uh, for a uh, change or, or change of genes or uh, change of the expression of genes. Uh, these are proposed uh, uh, have uh, um, our uh, currently investigation for uh, increase uh, performance for uh, CRISPR Cas9 in uh, uh, droplets uh, uh, made uh, uh, by micro devices. Okay, uh, for uh, in, in this case, uh, this this article uh, focus in the. Uh, change of uh, microRNAs for uh, uh, the microRNAs is, is a very important for a study and the uh, uh, gene expression and the uh, uh, relates in the uh, pathology and the difference in the ends uh, or uh, uh, stability for for uh, RNA and and uh, gene expression for the all on transcriptomic or, or metabolomics. Uh, uh, Characterized, right? Uh, in in this article, uh, explain for the, the Cas9, it's a different uh, enzyme for uh, change and code in the specific target for gene. Okay, uh, in, in this case, uh, you you can see that the the Cas9 uh, 13 uh, 
this this behavior is the different for uh, the the Cas9 or the CRISPR Cas9 is the, the common uh, more use in 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 this lab and the the, the, the major field labs and now because of the the change uh, it is the only uh, chair uh, yeah and 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 modificate the, the different model. It, it, oh, this depends the, the target, for example, in the short uh, RNA or uh, with the transform the cDNA. Uh, it's it's different. It, it's only depend on the, of the technique. Uh, okay, in in this table, uh, you can see the the the, the different characterized for. Uh, the different and seen use uh, the CRISPR and a uh, cast uh, 12 cast 13 and the cast 14 and the depend the enzyme on the technique or, or uh, also on the, the target uh, you you make a the different strategy for the change uh, or the modificate uh, gene or the modificate of expression of, of, of the modificate uh, different protein or 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 you you can uh, knock knock out the gene or uh, suffer more expression of the protein depend okay also uh, this 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 technique depend or uh, the technical of, of uh, amplification for uh, the 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 target and and gene editing and and uh, nucleic detection, for example, uh, uh, this is the gold standard for using the qPCR for uh, we understand and, and comprove the the modification in only in uh, mRNA, no, not just only in the old protein, but uh, you uh, need uh, have a uh, and depend the 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 team the this the strategy for 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 change for for detection uh, the the expression gene for example it is the other uh, use is uh, isothermal nucleate amplification this this, this technical is is more common is used in macrophytic devices because and and, and not not need a, a Thermocyclide on on more uh, temperature for the the stabilizing uh, use in the enzyme is is the different. Okay. Uh, as finally, uh, the in 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 this in this paper, uh, speak for the the different use for for this enzyme uh, Cas9 on viability A. Uh, for uh, the different strategy for the, the change uh, gene editing and a uh, knockdown gene or super expression gene and uh, uh, in the different techniques of, for example, in the digital PCR with a droplet or the isothermal uh, uh, amplification for uh, microfluidic devices or uh, use in the uh, directive of uh, school tour or the uh, other techniques. Okay. Uh, 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 in finally, uh, I can show uh, the uh, they uh, explain for the uh, different sensitive for a uh, quantification. Like you use a. Uh, the different uh, enzyme for the Cas9 or uh, the Cas12 uh, and the Cas13 and the Cas14 is a different, but uh, the the detection for uh, microRNA is important because uh, it's the length of molecular it's it's very very sensible and and and, and this uh, strategy for more specific and sensitive because it improve the analysis of the, the the experiment for uh, genetic uh, 
genetic uh, engineer. Uh, okay, take for attention. And thank you, everyone. Okay, and do you have any questions? I, I have a question for uh, Eric. Oh, no, Eric, it's gone. Uh. Mm, okay. 